this thing is just going to be like a chit chat sorry it's just going to be like jesting with you guys i think it's about time the parents start thinking about the skills you know the kids can learn to balance up with the education because we can't just sit down and allow it to go like that and allow covid 19 you know to spoil their education or to, uh, to spoil their education to spoil their ca career so we just have to think about skill acquisition you know to help them out of this situation so parents please up your game when it comes to this skill acquisition online anywhere you can get it make sure these kids learn something if at all they are missing out in school curriculum hi guys welcome to my youtube channel it's your girl that follow cutie if today is your first time of dropping by kindly you know give a thumbs up and like this video share support this girl that is coming to you thank you and if you have been here before i really appreciate you guys i really do appreciate you guys thank you for stopping by my channel so today we are going to talk about um a very crucial matter like it's still about covid 19 just like i told you the other time like is covid 19 really in nigeria so if you want to know about that if you want to know if COVID-19 is really in Nigeria I'll link the video up here so that you guys can go watch it so guys on today's topic the impact of COVID-19 in Nigeria on Nigerian education it has really really dealt with a lot of people like seriously dealt with both parents, both students, both kids, you know, everybody, it has really, really, really dealt with everyone because right now, all the kids that are supposed to go to the next class, they are all at home. And you know one thing about these children, once they are at home, they play, they tend to forget the things that they are being taught in school. And now, just like the kids, uh, the children, I'm talking about the once they live in elementary school, I'm saying elementary because that is uh, the general term for you know primary school kind of in everywhere. But here in Nigeria, the primary school students going to GSS one now there's nothing like common interest. I'm still imagining, you know, I'm still trying to imagine what is going to happen, how they are going to do it. Maybe they will just you know push them to GSS one like that. Or they are still going to still write their common entrance to be able, you know, to graduate to GSS one, you know, junior secondary school one. And now talking about the junior YA, they are going to SS one. How are they going to do it? And let's leave that aside. School resumes September, right? All the uh, the uh, school calendar, all school calendars resume september right now we are in july now and they've not even written bagek they've not even think about writing jam now how do you want them to you know move to the next level i'm talking about to the university and they are still yet to write their wayek you can see why i said the impact of this COVID-19 on Nigerian students is so bad. Like, you know, the state government actually asked all schools to, uh, to, you know, to start the online classes, like internet classes. Now, let me use my own daughter's school as an example. This is what they do. Uh, they send videos, you know, they conduct a lesson in the in classroom. Lessons will be sent to the parents' uh, phone. That is, let's, let's assume around 12 p.m. It depends on when they are true. Sometimes very early, sometimes around 1, sometimes even 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And they want the kids to do it and submit it to the particular teacher that took that class. Now, the parent is at work because the lockdown has been eased, right? Then the parent is at work and the child is at home. I don't know how they want uh, the child to keep up with what they are being taught in school because I don't really understand that is that by the side and they keep you know throwing things every day like that I appreciate it that at least they are trying their best to you know 
teach these children something like they are really really trying about that let's and that is because they are private school let's go to public school what is going to happen to these children in public school that cannot even afford internet i don't know how they want them to cope how are they going to keep up with the children in private school even some of these private school they are not really very big private school per se how did they want how did the government want these children to cope because i've been i've been like what is really really going on that is the impact of covid 19 on nigerian school on nigerian children on nigerian schools on nigerian children so right now let's now move to the university level <laughs> this is so funny right it's, it's it to me it's a bit funny like now i'm not trying to nail any school here they are trying their best they are trying to make it work but i think nigeria has not gotten to that stage they've not gotten it right when it comes to online learning nigeria have not got into that stage i'm not talking about you know learning from you know outside learning from abroad like online schools but i'm talking about online online classes that you know nigerians are coordinating i think nigerian have not nigeria have not even reached that level like they've not they've not even reached that level they should just drop it like I know they are trying their best they are doing what they can you know to make it work but i think they've not gotten to that level you know i myself I'm, I'm actually in school you know graduating very soon you know by this time i'm supposed to be doing my graduation like or preparing for my graduation you know my master's like but let's see now my lecturers <laughs> this is so funny like you know holding class on zoom and you will be hearing lecturers children talking about things and lecturers will be standing up going to you know holding lecture from the from the corner of the house and lecturer will be standing up to go and attend to the kid you know and come back to come and sit and we are in class zoom class you know it's it's so it's so so <laughs> i don't i don't know what the word to use for it it's so disheartening it's so uncalled for it's <laughs> You know it's not funny but it's just kind of funny too you know i was in a class and a lecturer actually sent a child on an errand and the child came back and was shouting daddy daddy hey that thing that you sent me he's on uh, the ground and we are in class you know several times like let's leave lecture out of this now i'm talking about we colleagues ourselves you know some will just put on the uh they won't mute their mic and you'll be hearing the voices of the children here and there shouting ever on the ground and we are in class that is why i said nigerian has not gotten it right when it comes to online classes I think we really 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 need to work on it like take our time to do things right when you want to hold a class i expect a lecturer to be in an office if you're not in an office be in a serene place whereby you'll be able to concentrate with the student you want to take but yeah mm -mm 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 -mm, there's nothing like that so i the covid 19 has really 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 dealt with Nigerian school, Nigerian scholars, it has really, really dealt with everyone. Right from, you know, uh, elementary, uh, right from kindergarten to the university level, it has really, really dealt with everyone. There, you know, at the time I was thinking that, okay, let me kind of like, you know, the child, I had to get like my daughter, I'm using my daughter as a case study right now because I had to get a a tutor for her to you know to coach her at home and uh she to coach her at home but then i felt like the person is not doing enough and the, like the person is not going to cover the uh 
school curriculum like it's not the person is, is just mainly teaching english and uh english and uh, math like quantitative and verbal attitude but when it comes to the general things that the school curriculum carries like uh, maybe health science uh, social study and all that i'm not sure the person is able to put things together you know to teach the child and now i was thinking okay let me look for an online class for her like an online school so that okay we we'll know that every day or some between some a time to you know between some hours she will know that this is a class time she will concentrate you know and do things online but i'm yet to find one though i was able to find one but there's still a bot like there's still limitations like the internet and the lights like right now as i'm speaking with you guys like for a, almost a month now there has been no electricity in my house and yet yeah, if i put on the gen the sound of the gen alone is killing i just don't like gen but then i would like to you know to kind of think about working with it you know maybe once in a while or sometime and uh I don't know how we are going to do it. Like Nigerians, we've not really, really gotten it. We've not really, really gotten it. So I think to me, COVID-19 has really, really dealt with Nigerian scholars. And I, the government, I'm pleading if it's, if this video is able to get to them to kind of find a solution to it. So that is it about the uh, scholars. Let's assume that the government want the scholars to resume back to school. <laughs> That is going to be a serious issue. You can see why I said there's no hope. That I'm not people are not believing it again. That I'm even skeptical about it myself. That COVID nineteen is actually in Nigeria because now let's assume the school children are resuming now. The scholars are resuming, and in a class they are like public school. Let me use public school as a case study. Like public school, we are having like seventy students in a class. We are having like fifty, seventy, even some. 90 yes i said 90 because i could remember when i was in school when i first entered secondary school then that was way back in 1990 something <laughs> early 90s and uh i could remember in my class we were like 97 or i think gs1 we were like uh 97 gs2 we were like 100 and something in a class and when I, that was in Ogun state Though the school is a very big school, like a very big school, it can accommodate us all, but the students were so much and it's a board now. So now let's talk about the board now students. How are they going to cope with this COVID-19 in their school? Who is going to take care of the, of the kids? Who is going to take care of the students? How are they really, really going to deal with this uh, COVID-19 situation? I'm talking about the preventive measures now. Is it the how are they going to do it? Because I'm not it's not certain that you know the board now students will be going to school. And not to talk of their students that will go to school and come back home. Now we are talking about the body now students. How are they going to cope? Are the parents ready to leave their kids to go back to school to body now? I'm not certain parents want to do that. So you can see that this COVID-19 has really dealt with Nigerian scholars. Please parents, I need us to you know think about this, you know, of the way out, how we can help this kid, you know, balance the situation on ground. How we can come to their head, you know, how we can help them out of this situation because we can't rely on the government we just have to you know think of a way to come out of this situation by helping the kids so parents i'm calling on you to you know opt your game in helping these kids out because we can't just now and be looking and many are even thinking about vocational studies like vocational courses you know by taking 
by allowing the kid to learn one thing, vocational thing, you know, one skill or the other, you can, you know, maybe on what on YouTube or on internet, you can just look for any vocational courses, the any vocational thing, any skill acquisition that they can, you know, learn. I think it's about time the parents start thinking about the skills, you know, the kids can learn to balance up with the education because we can't just sit down and allow it to go like that and allow COVID nineteen, you know, to spoil their education or to uh, to spoil their education to spoil their ca career. So we just have to think about skill acquisition, you know, to help them out of this situation so parents please opt your game when it comes to this skill acquisition online anywhere you can get it make sure these kids learn something if at all they are missing out in school correctly so th that is for the parents at least for the children's sake please let's do something parents I'm calling out on you guys. So I'm actually sorry if this video is long, but it's just that we have to talk about it like this. Let's assume they are resuming. So what are what are the preventive measures the government are putting in place? Can the school afford it? Is the government going to support them when it comes to preventive measures for kids in school? Because I know the government cannot they can afford to do it but i'm saying the government cannot supply all these preventive measures for all school i'm not sure they can cover up all the schools all the students the preventive measures like can the schools afford it when it comes to public school private school okay the private school will actually take it out on the parents but when it comes to public school is the government going to support and if the government is going to support will it be a full support like in a class where there is 100 students would they be allowed to sit like 50 students in a class i'm not sure that is possible and in the class going to the class okay what about preventive measures like sanitizers like uh uh nose mask like all that not everybody can afford it so i don't know how it's going to be like that is why i said 19 has really really dealt with the nigerian scholars like even when we resume i don't know how we are going to cope with all that like the preventive measures the social distancing you know everything I don't know how we are going to cope. So these are the impacts of COVID-19 on Nigerians. Who is going to save us out of this? Who is going to you know, bring us out of this? Like, it's really, really going to bring Nigerians to the way, way back. So the mates around the world will really, really be ahead of them. And even the rich will be ahead of these children. So you can see that even bridging the gap between the rich and the poor is very, very hard when it comes to schools and education, you know, when it comes to education level. Now, like, there is this gap, and the gap is so huge, like, so huge. Impact of COVID-19 on Nigerian students. What do you think about it? If you are a Nigerian mom, if you are a Nigerian parent, what do you think? And if you are a Nigerian student and you are listening to this, what do you think? you know about what i've just said the impact of covid 19 on nigerian students who is going to come to our age who is going to help us out of this situation it is it is really really a serious matter that you know everybody the government every, really needs to think about you know and talk about it and not keep quiet so so guys that is it on today's video so i just want to you know, kind of chit chat you know talk about the impact of uh, covid 19 on nigerian scholars on nigerian schools on nigerian students so that is it on today's video i don't want it to be too long because if i really really want to you know bring out the factors the disadvantages advantages and all that you know factors affecting blah 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 you know all that certain the children of this government 
are not in public school, the children of this government, most of them are even abroad. Most of them are even studying online abroad. So, I don't understand the kind of government we have here in Nigeria. So guys, if you like this video, I'm going to stop here. If you like this video, kindly give a thumbs up by liking it. And uh, you know, if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe to this channel, support your brand, share to other parents. We all need to, you know, sleep on this, you know, talk about this and you know, you know, know the next thing to do, the better way to you know guide our child, the best thing we could offer our children is education. And right now, COVID-19 is has taken that away. So we should think of another kind way. of support them and you know, think of the way forward. We shouldn't just sit down and relax hoping and hoping that one day the government will call up the uh the lockdown and waiting for the lockdown to go away and the kids will resume they they have missed a lot even with this short period that they've been at home so we really really need to you know be on top of our game by helping these children out so guys come to the end of today's video Kindly like, subscribe. If you are new to this channel, subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. That is the only way you can support me and, you know, like this video and share to other parents who need to hear this. So thank you. So next time I come, your way, your girl, that follow cutie saying bye-bye. Stay safe, oh, guys. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye-bye.